Yo, Ben, what's going on, bro? I hate my life. So at this point, you're wet and dirty with a broken tie and stuck in the middle of Colorado. Your wife has no idea where you are. Your job has no idea where you are. What's the next move? I plan to get it out. Just right, stay left because if you go right, you're going to fall off because you're not going to have time to react. So, remember that flight we had to catch? We actually ended up back in Connecticut that next morning, but then back in Colorado the very next day. With the help of a loaner car and tools from our friends at Berg, a camera in hand, and some parts from back at FC Piero, I found myself back in Colorado, ready to get the Cayenne out. So I do want to say one of the coolest things about this, uh, in kind of a messed up, twisted way, is it's pretty amazing what the car community is willing to do for a complete stranger. So I posted last night about 9 p.m. on a Facebook group, a Colorado offer a Facebook group that I need to help. Uh, in about 15 minutes, I had 60 comments, a bunch of, bunch of messages, people really outreaching and, and trying to help out. So that's why last night at 11 p.m. I booked a flight for 8 a.m. this morning and ended up here. Where is here exactly? Just outside Denver, Colorado, completely by myself. If you notice that this episode feels a little more scrappy than the previous ones, that's just because it had to be. We're going to meet up with the group. Uh, I think we're going to have four vehicles. I haven't met any of these guys. I've just been talking to one guy, John. Kind of excited to see their rigs because they seem like they're pretty experienced with pulling stuff out. But yeah, it's pretty amazing what strangers are willing to do. Uh, it's the middle of the week, it's a Wednesday, uh, middle of the day, um, and still, again, willing to put in the time and effort to come out here and at least give it a try. Uh, again, I'm not sure if we're gonna be successful or not, but just the fact of the matter that we're out and actually trying is pretty rad. This thing is beefy. Uh, thanks, man. I mean, it's only four miles down to the river. You, have you ran hacking? I before? have not. Okay. Oh. So, I mean, yeah. based on I mean, you should be all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, it was sick until I didn't come back. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a couple couple of rock climbing spots are not too bad, but I, my goal is to be at least halfway up whatever trail we're taking back up before it gets dark. That would be sweet. Yeah. So. Just remember, if a Porsche can do it, you guys can do it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not worried about getting down there. I'm no, worried about dragging a Porsche yeah, back yeah, yeah, up yeah. it. It's a, that's, it's a German tank, too. Yeah. So the goal was set. Get into the trail and get the Cayenne back up by dark. It's a bit ironic this time. Uh, Mark, 2003 TJ Rubicon. Hey Josh, this is uh, 2019 uh, JL uh, Henrietta. I'm Matt Parker, and this is a uh, 91 Toyota pickup. This thing looks light. Uh, it's about 3950, oh. right around 4,000 pounds. Right. Cody Gardner, and this is my 97 Jeep Cherokee. This is stock. Hey, <laughs> John. Hey, what's up? It's my 95 Forerunner. A little more than stuff. <laughs> On these first section of trails, with the experience these guys had, it was relatively smooth sailing all the way up. It was honestly pretty fun to watch their rigs and their experience show how it's done without much trouble or struggle. The Cayenne is, after all, a fully loaded leather-clad luxury SUV. The fact that it was able to do this stuff still makes me proud. We are, I'd say, about halfway through the halfway through the trail so far. Um, we've got 
John leading, Cody and I are behind him, and uh, we're making a really good time. Again, kind of weird being back here so soon. Like last night, I was in Connecticut in bed with the family, and the next day here we are. But we're making decent time. We're getting into some of the more tighter technical stuff coming up, and then uh, anxiously awaiting seeing the Cayenne, seeing what's left of it. Hopefully, it's it's untouched. But the guys have been optimistic, which is nice. I need that because uh, I'm pretty much thinking worst case scenario. So we're basically fighting daylight, um, hoping to get down there and either get the car running before it gets dark or at least have a plan to get it out, um, pulling-wise. All right, Cody, we're coming up to my, my biggest fear of this entire thing, which is actually this one corner. I'm trying to figure out how the hell we're gonna bring a car around this. If not, maybe we go over. We can definitely put a snatch block on that tree, pull it up, yep. and then winch it back uh, this way without the snatch block. See? We, we can make it happen. Already. We follow. Yeah, true that. We found a kick in the camping spot, at least. That is very true. So, we're about to come around the corner to where the Cayenne's sitting. Let's uh, cross our fingers. I'm pretty nervous right now, not gonna lie. Oh man, I hate to break it to you. I'm kidding, she's complete. Fishing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who would leave her. Uh, horse kind of turbo down there. <laughs> well, first thing complete. Absolutely. I thought the Baja's would be gone, dude. Yeah. At least that. Nobody touched it. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm surprised the tents go back. Wrong key. Well, like yes, this was a squad that was fully prepared for recovery. It wouldn't hurt to try to get the Cayenne started to drive out on its own. With a full set of parts and tools that we didn't have last time, we would try everything possible to get the Cayenne out under its own power to make the recovery that much easier. Hate to be that guy, but while I was in the car, what happened? Okay. Other than losing that socket for a good 10 minutes? We got the socket. Yeah, got the socket. With a stick. Engine rotates. Five times over. Yeah, I would really like didn't. There's still a possibility it may have a bent rod or something, yeah. but in my experience, if it a hydro lock, that the rod would be bent to the effect that you, you couldn't, couldn't rotate it, it over. Yeah. If we can get her to crank, I'd feel confident about trying to crank it. Yeah. If there's any water left in the cylinders, it should shoot it out. Yeah. And then if everything's good at that point, then let's see if we can get everything together. How's it looking on the inside? Uh, so those two TCU units were, are still pretty wet, but I'm gonna swap those out really quick. So you have two new ones? I have two new ones. I'm gonna put those in, and then I don't know what else we need for power, like why else it would click if it's gonna continue it to click. Be, that should be it. Yeah. Like if it's not communicating with the transmission to communicate with the neutral safety switch, it's gonna kill power right. to the starter. Start. Okay. So if we can get power coming out, we should be good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I went back that one up. All right, let's see. Right there. Oh, oh. Yeah, put that battery in it. Hell yeah. Put With the car fully turning over, there was hope the Yippie Cayenne could be driving out on its own power. There was no doubt in my mind that the engine had damage and would need some work, but the vibe was positive once we heard it crank. I was like, it spins, let's go. Yeah. It's getting dark. It turns over though, so that's uh, good news. Oh yeah. Cool. <laughs> the only thing that I've ever seen that's worse than that is a Chrysler Sebring. And they're underneath the passenger side wheel well. Oh, oh you gotta yeah. take the tire off to change the tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no wonder it. Go figure, can't find a 10 millimeter. You need yeah. that? Yes, I got that. Oh, that seat costs more than my whole blazer. I mean, look, first, everything's on it, so it's not, one it's, box checked. Yeah. It's not fun if it's easy. <laughs> that's true, that's fair. That's fair. You know, no good stories ever come from the easy days. That's very true. Uh, if we get this running and driving out of here, it's time for a beer. No freaking pizza, no freaking beer. <laughs> Just flex seal the bottom, you're fine. Too soon, dude. <laughs> While the engine may have been hydro-locked, the electronics that lived to the seat that got completely submerged were our biggest concern. Without that, the engine wouldn't have a chance to turn over at all. That battery is no way wonder. bigger than I expected. Let me try and get some more water out. I smell gas. Yeah, I mean, it's 
getting fuel. Oh yeah. Spin, uh, keep spinning. Keep going. Just hold it down. It just died. Where is that? Did we put that jump pack away? It's a brand battery. What the yeah, but they don't always come fully charged. Um, it didn't push out a lot of water either. Uh, Alright, so she uses no cut. Go ahead. Alright, let's put uh let's put plugs in it. Yeah, let's put it back together. Mm, sounded good. With the engine continuing to turn over, no more water coming out, and time ticking by, the decision was made to reassemble the engine. Even with a slight sound of what was likely a bent rod, we had nothing left to lose by simply trying to fire this thing up. Oh yeah, good love, dude. Just like that? Yeah, and then it just turns into locks. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That is the right Not one. Not super satisfying. Yeah. That doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy, but... No, I mean, they should see. Should see yeah. Looking back at this now, all I can think about is the fact that this is what the car community is about. Newly acquainted off-road friends, turning wrenches together, sharing an adventure, all with the hopes of getting myself and this car out of here to see a trail on another day. Yep, that hurts. Even with that slight sound of rod knock, we really had nothing left to lose by trying to fire this thing up. Oh. Ooh, yeah, remember me saying we got all the water out? Remember that whole bit about the car looking like it was running when it was stuck, when really it was the exhaust system taking in water? Put in neutral, drag it over here on the hill. Might not be a bad idea. Yeah. John had the idea to try and put the Cayenne on an angle to flush out any water left in the exhaust with the help of some gravity. Little more. This is good. good stuff. A lot of water came out, though. A lot of water. A lot of water came out. And just like that, we had officially hydro-locked the engine. It was time to get straight to recovery mode as the sun began to set behind the mountain. OK, let's, uh, let's get it back over here, face that way, and start rigging. Yep. That was it. OK. All right, let's start rigging. Yep. Damn it. Let's pull it down to the open right there so we can face it that way. Yeah. If we had limitless time, tools, and resources, it would have been great to spend more time flushing the entire system out and trying to get the car properly running. That said, given the circumstances, as a team, we did what we could and had to remember the true goal of the day, and that was safely getting back out. Whoa. Interesting. Is that the water? I don't know what it. No, it's like a vent. It just sprayed out a ton of water. Yeah, dude. Cool, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do that. Oh, we got the tires free. A little longer than a few minutes later. So we're about 30 minutes in and we've gone maybe 200 yards. Uh, honestly, it's probably going to take 16 hours. It's about 7.30 p.m. right now. I'll be surprised if we don't see the sun come up. It wasn't too long until we hit our second recovery obstacle. Nothing like a swift reminder to make sure when winching, you're using the strongest tree possible to take the load you're putting on it. Sometimes you pick wrong. No one tell Courtney about that. What? What? Good? Yeah, I'm fine. What? Well, that's a thing. Was dead. I think we gotta hook up to that big boy. If he can get down here. Yeah, yeah he's coming. 
We realized for this initial climb, we were going to need a four car chain to be able to pull the Cayenne up and over the steep rocky terrain. After clearing out the fallen tree and debris, we got back to it. Flashback. All right, Cody, we're coming up to my, my biggest fear of this entire thing, which is actually this one corner. End of flashback. This is the part I've been fearing the whole time is this hard left. It's really gnarly. And with the train of cars, it's gonna be really difficult to get around it. Yeah, I like that better. John's trying to back up this hill. I know. So that he can then winch me up straight and then we can pull the car to the left. But it's kind of sketchy backing down this. It feels like you're leaning, but you're not that bad. I know. Look, you're gonna be flat. You're right about flat. A little later. John's winch is not working. So we're going about an hour winching up this. <laughs> he just bashed the remotes. Few moments later. After struggling for about an hour trying to winch the car up and over, we ended up putting too much side load on the front tire, inevitably blowing the tire right off the wheel. Now lucky for us, I did have the spare for a moment just like this. Much, much later. Well, yeah, that we're, progress. We we're making serious progress here. Yeah. Of course, the air suspension has since failed, and my brakes are dragging. We blew a tire out, but we're making progress. As you can hear, the rear e-brake being stuck. Why wouldn't it? My front end is completely slammed. The bags are both deflated, so that's great. But we move on. John's drive shaft just popped again. But we're making progress. One minute, 37 seconds later. We move 15 more feet. But then John broke his drive shaft again. <laughs> Poor John. Got a very solid three car train going right now. My air suspension being out is a giant bummer. Um, but I'm just being pulled by both the Forerunner and the Jeep right now. So we've only got two pull. We head up to a three. Uh, we've gotten up most of the steep hills. Uh, the last section has some massive boulders. And since I'm slammed, a little bit worried about that. And then we also have to drop me down with the winch off of the two big boulder sections. So it should be interesting. Uh, we're about six hours in right now. And honestly, ahead of where I thought we might be. So I'm staying optimistic. Just thinking about how the fact that I need to put a new freaking engine in this after we just did all the work to it. But I digress. Let's get out of here first. So we're starting the ascent now. Figuring out if we're going to hook up uh, Josh's larger Jeep to the back of the Cayenne. Because I don't have much for brakes. And I'm bouncing off everything. I stacked some rocks on the little obstacle that's right there. Okay. And we shouldn't be, you sh your, your center shouldn't hit anything. Okay. All right, just stay left because if you go right, you're going to fall off and it's, we're going to drag you across it because you're not going to have time to react. All so. Right. All right, we gravy? Yeah, we're gravy. Let's roll. We're about to hit the first big boulder obstacle. Kind of nervous about this. Don't really have brakes. Um, and it's a long, long drop down, especially with the front end just dragging ass. So this might get interesting. All right, John, tighten up. Yeah, he's good. You're strapped on both sides, so you'll be all right. You're in a good line, just hold it. You're good, John, slowly. Keep moving slow. Hold. Oh, okay. Yep, you're, you're on strap on the back, so you're all right. I'm a little bit driver. There you go. All right, hold up, John. Are you? You need pulled or? Are you I feel like I'm double tension right now. I don't know. You're not. You uh, have no I'm tension in the back. The I bump, yeah, I bump forward. Hey, pull forward, John. Just a little. Keep going. Where's my wheel trying to go right now? Uh, you're you're actually fairly straight. All right, John. All right, 
Walk it down. Walk, slide it down. You're on frame. You're on frame. Slide her down. Slide her down. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Right, can you stop? John, go forward. Slow. All I want to do is get the rope out from under him. So, remember those rock sliders we installed? I don't think this is exactly how we had planned to use them quite yet, but they were already saving what was left of the kayak. Alright, John. Right now, on. John, go forward. Yeah, you gotta go hard, passenger. Yeah, you're down. That's good. Let's disconnect the brake vehicle. Well, that's what I'm saying. We need to disconnect because he needs to be free to get down. Yep. Hey, I'm not sliding all over the place. Hey, I like hey. this rock stuff. Look at that. It's like a downhill slalom. So nobody's attached to me. I gotta try not to slide all the way down this hill and flip this thing off of the cliff. Or not the cliff, but the ledge that's down there. Uh, it's definitely difficult without vacuum in the brake system, well, without brake booster and then no ABS, so yeah, I'm basically locking up. Uh, not feeling super confident right now, but we're on the last leg. That's it? Yeah. Ugh. Now I got you. Here, let me chalk them, have them hold the brakes, and then uh, we'll just reset. All right, hold on the brake. Yep. Hey, can you just uh, pay out a little bit, like a foot maybe, just to make sure he's going to hold? Yeah, he just, it just stopped. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're good. A little bit more to, oh, there we go. All right, go ahead. One hour later. Well, it's 2.30 a.m. The Cayenne is out. The night is still not over. We still need to get it picked up and figure out where I'm staying, figure out everything else. But the freaking Cayenne is out thanks to basically a group of strangers. And they're not really strangers anymore after this freaking adventure. And just another reason why our armed forces are badasses. All these guys work for the Army and took the time to come out and help me out. I'm pretty sure they all have uh, have to work tomorrow at like 6 a.m. So they're gonna get maybe three hours of sleep. All for a stranger. Pretty wild. Holy God damn it! Right here, oh, dude. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. All right, so we're still gonna go take you down to the parking lot down there. Yeah, that's what we we're talking. I just talked about that. Okay. It's um, just. I know it's not as far out. No, 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 it's but fine. It's still as like, long as I can, yeah, yeah. I can make sure I can get someone out there. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, dude. I did yeah. not think that was going to happen. Oh, no, no, man. That uh, turned out great. Thanks, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely, man. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm just glad you're able to get back over. All right, so everybody is airing back up. Um, we're officially completely out. Uh, we need to pull the Cayenne to a spot that it can actually get flatbed towed out. So then it can go probably to bird performance where we'll probably assess the situation. Honestly, car shot, engine shot, all those rough trails with no suspension, probably did some damage, but the car's out, not sitting there. I don't have to keep thinking about it. Uh, we can come back to the project when the time is right. And yeah, I just couldn't be more grateful for the people who came out tonight and helped. Pretty amazing. Did not think this was gonna happen, especially this week, so.